Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sudi. Welcome to my second educational video. Today, I thought I would talk about a condition that affects both men and women and that I receive numerous emails about and that people come from all over the world to see me for a second opinion. And that condition is Maid-Thurner syndrome. Maid-Thurner syndrome was actually discovered in 1957 by Dr. May and Dr. Thurner. And what they found when they were doing autopsies was that some patients actually had a compression of their iliac vein, their left iliac vein. Now just to do a quick recap, the arteries carry the blood from the heart down through our body and to our legs. The veins, which are here in blue, take the blood from our feet and lower body back up to the heart. Now the arteries and veins are sitting right next to each other. And what was found was that the right iliac artery, so this is the artery that supplies blood to your right leg. This artery would cross over the left iliac vein that you see here in blue. Now the left iliac vein is what drains your left leg. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the arteries are under high pressure. So when your blood pressure is 120 over 80, that 120 number is the pressure inside your artery. The veins on the other hand are very low pressure. The veins have a pressure of somewhere around 10 to 15. So this high pressure artery crosses right over the low pressure left iliac vein and it compresses it. And what is sitting behind this left iliac vein is the bone of your spine. And so the bone of the spine is very rigid and so it doesn't give at all. So every time your heart beats, if it beats 80 times a minute, that high pressure artery is squashing this low pressure vein against the bone of the spine. Now, you can imagine that over a period of years, what do you think can happen to that uh, low pressure vein? It starts to get damaged. And so over a period of years and years, we start to develop scar tissue inside that vein. Now, imagine that vein being about the size of a quarter. And over 35 years of that vein being beat upon by the artery on top of it, it starts to develop scar tissue inside. And that scar tissue causes narrowing of the lumen of the vein. So that means the, um, the amount of blood that's flowing in the vein, the space is less because it's filled up with scar tissue. And if one develops so much scar tissue that the blood cannot flow properly, then the blood will actually slow down and it will actually start to clot. And will clot right about here. And a patient will get a blood clot, or what we call a deep vein thrombosis, all the way down their leg. Now, Dr. May and Dr. Thurner, they knew this. They knew that when the iliac vein gets compressed because of this anatomy, geometry, that a patient would be at a high risk for developing a blood clot. But what we have found out over the past 65 years is that it's just not a blood clot that patients can present with. Patients can also present with unexplained left leg swelling without a clot. Oftentimes these patients are diagnosed as having lymphedema for many years. All of a sudden they're diagnosed with lymphedema. So, any man or woman who presents with unexplained left leg swelling, and we're talking about the entire leg needs to swell, not just a little bit at the ankle, but if the entire leg swells, Maid-Thurner syndrome should be considered. 
And then the last thing is chronic pelvic pain, which many uh, young women write to me about. If a woman experiences chronic pelvic pain that is lasting more than six months, that is worse withstanding, that improves when she lays down, that worsens with intercourse, and um, also uh, presents with low back pain and perhaps frequent urination, all of these symptoms together are referred to as pelvic congestion syndrome, or the new term, which is pelvic venous insufficiency. But regardless of whether you refer to it as pelvic congestion syndrome or pelvic venous insufficiency, Maynard-Thurner syndrome can be a cause of that. Now, how do we treat Maynard-Thurner syndrome? Well, first, we have to diagnose Maynard-Thurner syndrome. And the best way to diagnose Maynard-Thurner syndrome is with imaging. And this can be diagnosed with ultrasound, MRI, CAT scan, and the best uh, mode of imaging is to do a catheter venogram and use intravascular ultrasound. That is the best way to diagnose uh, May Thurner syndrome. Now, a very common question that people ask me is they say, Dr. Sudi, I have a CAT scan that shows May Thurner syndrome. It shows that my iliac vein is squashed like a pancake. And I have been told that I need a stent. And my very first response to these patients is, what are your symptoms? Because the one thing that really has to be kept in mind is that in order to have a syndrome, you need to have symptoms. And so if you were to do a CAT scan on me, there is probably a 25% chance that you will see compression of the iliac vein because we are all built the same to a certain extent and we all have the same anatomy where the right iliac artery is crossing over the left iliac vein. For some people, that artery is literally right on top of the vein. And in other patients, there may be 10 millimeters or a centimeter separating the artery from the vein. And so depending on what that distance is, a patient can have more or less compression of the iliac vein. And so if the CAT scan or MRI shows compression of the iliac vein, and that uh, uh, CAT scan or MRI is being done to rule out appendicitis, for example, then the patient cannot have Maynard-Thurner syndrome. Because again, in order to have a syndrome, you need symptoms. So compression in and of itself does not equal Maynard-Thurner syndrome. So what do we call it when someone has compression of the iliac vein on imaging, but they have no symptoms at all? We call it Maynard-Thurner physiology. And all it means is there is some compression there. That's all it means. There is no further treatment needed. No stent is required. Because the one thing that we have to keep in mind is that stents are not foolproof. There are complications with stents. And you can have the best stent in the world, but it, if it is not inserted correctly, it doesn't matter how good that stent is. And there is no doctor in the world who can tell a patient what is going to happen to that stent over the next 30, 40, 50 years of their life. We just don't know. And so these stents really need to be reserved for patients who have one of the three things that I mentioned. They've had extensive DVT all the way up their leg. They have unexplained left leg swelling, which may have been diagnosed as lymphedema, or they have pelvic congestion syndrome. So those are the three conditions where a stent 
may need to be considered. How is May Thurner syndrome treated? Well, there are a few treatments that can be used. Some are better than others. The first treatment is really conservative management, and that may be done with blood thinners or anticoagulation. And for these patients, they may have had an extensive DVT in the past. Perhaps they don't want a stent. Perhaps they are not a candidate for a stent for a particular reason. But whatever it is, for some patients, a blood thinner may be what is prescribed in order to prevent such patients from developing a further uh, blood clot or any additional blood clots. The second treatment is balloon angioplasty. Now, this is a treatment that is not really done that often, but there are select cases where balloon angioplasty may be worth considering. Now, balloon angioplasty involves taking a balloon, inserting it into the vein, inflating the balloon, and that balloon will break up the scar tissue inside the vein. So here is the vein that is about the size of the quarter, and it is filled up, let's say half of it is filled up with scar tissue. And by putting a balloon inside and inflating the balloon, that balloon will break up all that scar tissue and squash it against the side wall of the vein. And by doing that, you have now made a much wider lumen in the vein and the blood can uh, uh, flow through the vein. However, balloon angioplasty does not fix the underlying problem because the artery, which is right on top of the vein, is still compressing it. So before angioplasty, you had compression of the iliac vein by the artery, as well as a whole bunch of scar tissue in the vein. Now, after angioplasty, you don't have the scar tissue, but you just have the compression. So a patient can still end up getting re recurrent blood clots or have left leg swelling, but there is a chance that just balloon angioplasty alone could improve symptoms. And who are the patients who would receive balloon angioplasty alone? It may be a patient, again, who does not want a stent and who has had a clot and um, has significant scar tissue in there and wants to give that a try. But more often than not, it tends to be very young patients. For example, if I get a young 18-year-old woman who presents with May Thurner syndrome after having an extensive DVT, in her case, I am going to be um, a little weary of putting a stent in such a young woman because I cannot tell her what is going to happen to that stent for the rest of her life. Now, it has taken 18 years for her to develop a clot in her left leg. And so perhaps by clearing up that scar tissue, maybe I can sort of reset the clock, so to speak, and she will be fine for another 15 to 18 years. And if she were to develop another DVT in her mid thirties, well then she can get a stent, but at least we have saved her 15 to 18 years of having metal in her body. Again, this is a, a discussion that really needs to be done with your doctor and is not necessarily the right uh, treatment uh, for everyone. And finally, there is putting a stent. And a stent is going to be placed right where the vein is uh, narrow. And so there's going to be a stent put right here. And what that stent does, it fully expands the vein so that when the high pressure artery is beating on the vein, the vein will not collapse because there's a rigid piece of metal inside it. 
So stents, again, serve a very worthwhile purpose. They can not only keep the vein open, they can potentially prevent an individual from getting further blood clots, although we're not sure uh, about that, but it also relieves the leg swelling. But it's very important that when stents are put in, it is put in by an experienced physician. Because again, as I said previously, it doesn't matter how good the stent is. If it's not placed properly, a patient is going to have problems. So I hope this brief video has uh, given you an opportunity to get a better understanding of Maytherner syndrome. For those of you uh, who would like more information, if you haven't checked out my blog, please check it out at gethealthyveins.com. For those of you who are waiting for my practice to open, 360 Vascular Institute, you can uh, find out more information and uh, sign up for the wait list at 360vascular.com. We're hoping that uh, the practice will open sometime uh, around the end of January or early February. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this educational.